Hi, everyone. So I'll be talking about uh, Victoria Police Station Locator. Uh, we recent, In fact, yesterday, we made the station locator live, and it has gone live just yesterday, so it's fresh off the press. Um, just uh, let me talk about it. This was a very small component that we had to make for the Victoria Police. So if I talk about the requirements, Victoria uh, police approach salsa to build a new component on their existing website and they wanted to elevate the user experience for finding the police stations um, the police station data they already had police station data available within their organization in uh, rdms uh, which is an api that they have uh, but the old implementation was not using it so they had to add update delete those stations manually which was naturally very you know erroneous uh, the other problem was that that impacted also the ability for to allow the the data to be accurate and you know so for example if one of the um, police stations was the phone number changed or if the police station was uh, removed or something like that uh, it went through a whole process where before it would be updated on the site so they wanted something which was much more uh, instant and not in, if not instant, but at least much more time uh, conscious. So the objective of the new component was to, as I said, improve the user experience and minimize dependency on manual content entry. And for the solution, uh, the Victoria Police already has a website, and the website is actually hosted hosted on single digital presence. Uh, also, that website is uh, supported by the single digital presence team. Uh, so we had to just build on top of that. So what we did was from the backend perspective, we, uh, auto we created a new content type called stations. We automated the migrations from the API into Drupal. Um, we also made sure one of the problems with such approach in our uh, in the historical projects that we had done was that whenever these API migrations used to happen, uh, for example, in this case, they wanted it to happen twice a day. It would be really, really, uh, it would be very processor heavy uh, on the service. So SDP specifically asked us to make sure that this um, syncing was done in a much more performant way. So what we did was we actually did a um, delta syncing of from the API. So the API call, whenever that was done, that was based, that was a delta call rather than doing a full. So that way is the number of records touch was minimized. Um, we, uh, in the, from the front end perspective, we uh, implemented suburb and postcode search for stations. We also implemented filter wire stations, uh, filter wire whether the station is open 24 hours or not. Um, filter by distance and then filter by specialty services. In addition, we did a uh, Google Maps integration as well. Very quickly, our team had a relationship manager, a project manager, a designer, tech lead, backend developer, front end developer, and a QA analyst. Uh, in fact, the backend developer for the project is on the call today, Gaurav. Um, so, uh, yeah. And the timeline the project inception was 27th March. First build started, the build started in May and Gole was, as I said yesterday. So all in all, it was a 15 day project, 15 weeks project, sorry. It would have been amazing if it was a 15 day project, but it was a 15 weeks project. So the, talking about a few challenges. So when we started the project, the API for, for the station was still in development. Uh, so we did not have any API at all. Um, and it, but during the project uh, phase, when, when we started building, the API team from Victoria Police was very, very helpful and they were able to uh, provide us with appropriate samples. So that made the uh, development a bit easier. And um, the, their, their API went into production last week and, <laughs> and hence we were able to um, launch just uh, yesterday. The other major issue with the project was the partial ownership of the project. And because it, we, it was a partial ownership, we did have to make sure that SDP was with us in all stages of the project. So we made sure that SDP was um, was kept in loop for whatever design we were implementing, technical designs, and they knew exactly what we were doing. Also, we made sure that 
um, we, when we were building, we built it as a separate feature. So we made sure that before we merged the feature into develop, they had a good review and we walked them through the whole uh, whole functionality as well. Another thing, another thing that SDP specifically requested after we started the project was that they wanted the backend uh, module to be developed as a separate module in a separate repository that would then be added into the Victoria Police repository from the backend. So that is why we created a new uh, repository, new uh, module called Tide State to locate, Station Locator. And that actually added to the complexities a bit because of the dependencies, et cetera. But having said that, um, it did. It was a great learning experience, experience and we were able to uh, do that well. So a very quick demo. Demo. Before I actually demo the new functionality, let me show you what the old functionality was. Can everybody see my screen and the old functionality? So this is the old how the old functionality used. This is find my local police station, and this is how the local police stations showed. And for example, if now I wanted to search for a specific um, suburb, I would pro. I would like something like Ararat and then search for it and it will show me the result. And that was it. This was naturally, as you can see, this is a keyword search. So it's very, very, it's not very nice. To, so take, for example, when I search for Box Hill, it gives me Box Hill, yes, but it gives me everything with hill in it and box in it. So Forest Hill, and if I go Pyramid Hill, Swan Hill, et cetera, et cetera. So if you look at, and look at these, they are just not relevant results. Also, it gives us some information about the individual um, stations, but not a lot of in, in, uh, lot of information is available. Now, looking at the new thing that we implemented just yesterday, <clears throat> this is a new police station location page. And when we land on the page, as you can see, we can see a full listing. We also have a maps integration, wherein we can zoom in into a specific area and I can actually filter or search by a suburb. And when I'm searching by a suburb, I can actually say something like this. So when I do an any distance, it will still show me all 332 results, but will it will sort by distance. But when I do something like, let's say 10 kilometers, then I press on search, then it limits my results as well. I can go to individual bullet stations as well, and it gives me much more information and also gives me a map there as well. And we have a map view as also. When we are on maps, we have actually disabled the filter by distance because when I'm on map, it tries to uh, focus on an area, but the more, more I zoom out, I can keep on, I, I start seeing more results. I can pan, et cetera, et cetera. And from here as well, I can go to individual police station. And that's it. That's the main demo that I wanted to show. Um, any questions? Um, so this is using a uh, solo in the backend. Sorry, I didn't get you. Are you using Apache Solo in the backend? No, we are using Elasticsearch. SDP actually uses Elasticsearch. Okay. Um, okay. I, yeah. Well. I, I, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, thanks, Siobhan. Um, are there any challenges you came across, uh, particularly around pagination? Um, no, because this was mainly listing. Um, so pagination on the listing, I, on the maps and on the, I think if I'm looking at challenges, pagination was not a problem. We did not face any issues there, 
But if I talk about problems or uh, challenges, I would say map view was pretty challenging because deciding on the behavior of the maps is always uh, an issue, how it should work, should it should we allow panning, should we allow filtering on maps? So those were some of the reasons why, for example, we disable this, because if we filter um, and then user tries to pan across the map, that would mean they would not see results, which was not um, looking very good. So that's why there were, uh, I would say, quite a lot of challenges around map behavior. But when it came to the list, I don't think there were a lot of challenges. OK, I, I had a brief look at it yesterday, and I was, I was just because I've done a few of these myself, I was curious yes, to see I know you've done the, sort of, the sort of ways that you did. And I noticed that um, uh, when you do a search, it returns everything. Uh, and then the pagination is just pulling off the data it already has. Um, so it uses Elastic for filtering by keywords. Yes. But it doesn't use Elastic for filtering by pages, which is fine because there's not a lot of data. But I was just wondering if there was a story behind that. No, there was nothing, no specific story. Uh, but because of the fact that we just had uh, 300, around about 300 uh, results, we knew the initial load will not be enough. Even if, even if we have, like in the future, there are a lot of stations, how many can they be? Maybe 500. So, and that's not a big chunk of data. So that's why that implementation was pretty okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from um, me? Just about the backend. So uh, is, is this a simple content type that you are managing yes. all the data in a single? Yes, this is a simple content type. Uh, we are migrating into that content type and we have made sure that the content type is non-editable. Okay. There, there is a problem. Sorry? So it just get the data from the API always. There's no manual handling of it. That is correct. It gets the data from manual from the API um, twice a day, 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. <clears throat> and because of the fact that we wanted to make sure that API was the source of truth, we have disabled any editing in the Drupal interface. And I will be talking to you, Hovind, specifically when handover goes <laughs> on this desk. <laughs> uh, just just a curious about one thing yeah. like everything is coming from api and it's an api driven thing why exactly do you use the backend drupal backend you can directly call the api you know yes um, there but... was a there was a huge discussion around that um but the main reason was that victoria police specifically wanted individual pages and secondly they so if I go to the old implementation, if you if you see, so they had a lot of pages like this, location, question mark. So in within their content, they were linking to pages like this. And we needed to, to create a list of those and also needed to create redirects. So that is why having a content type, and we had a major discussion with uh, Anthony from SDP around that, that should we directly will push the data into Elasticsearch and not use Drupal content types at all, um, using uh, the well-known module um, what was, that we used on the other project. Alan, we worked on that, data pipelines. Uh, we did discuss yeah. about that as well, but finally it was decided that it makes more sense to use Drupal, especially because of the fact that the content is not that huge. We're just talking about 320, 330. Um, stations. That's it. Any on this? Like it's it's a it's a locator. You can implement any kind of locator with this approach. I think that's why you have a separate module. The reason why we have a separate module is not because we wanted it. It's because SDP wanted it. They wanted a module which is separate, which was which is in a separate repository, and that can be installed on a on the reference site. Uh, so that's how we started with a separate module. Um, <clears throat> but but it's sort of not very separate as well because the front end is not separate, only the back end is separate. So back end is a separate module, but front end is not. So it's not that modular 
as we would have wanted, but the SDP front end does not support um, separate modules. So that's why we were not able to do that. Is there any specific reason for using Elastic API? SDP, this is an existing project uh, based on SDP and SDP uses Elastic. And we just implemented a one component, the station locator, nothing else. So that's the reason why we use Elastic. It was already there. Okay. The default stack in SDP implementation that for the search, they are using Elastic everywhere. So they can call directly uh, front-end API. Uh, they don't need to go with the Drupal route. Any more questions? So uh, just one question about the Google Maps. Like uh, there's a limitation with the API nowadays. So how exactly you're managing the API calls and all? It's a straightforward API calls every time. <clears throat> um, so when you say about limitations, um, there are two API keys that we are using. One of the API key uses the Google Map Embed and Google's JavaScript API. Now, both these APIs are actually free and they, they don't have any kind of any such limitations. So that was fine. Um, the other API that we have to use is um, Google Geocoding and Google Reverse Coding. And let me again share my screen. So Google Reverse coding is used when I use this feature. So when I use a use my location, I can't show how to use it because I have not enabled, um, uh, allow, I have not allowed my browser to use my location. But when I use when I use this feature, the browser sends a location and then it needs to be reverse geocoded to give a lat long. Uh, so that's where we use the reverse geocoding. And when I do this and select one of these, so the API that we are using for postcodes is the, it has only um, suburb names and postcodes. It does not have Latin long. So the moment we select this, we use the uh, Google geocoding API as well. So these are the two APIs that are actually the ones that um, need some investment, but that's that's what it is. <laughs> Was that your question, Govind? Yeah. Just want to confirm that it's yeah. a standard. It's a standard thing. Nothing spe special of going on. Uh, we did have a detailed conversation and with uh, Victoria Police and Victoria Police API. Um, the API team actually told that they have uh, the option of code coding and geocoding and reverse geocoding now, and that's something they we would told just last week. So uh, we have clearly told them that this is something that we can look forward in the future. We can change our implementation to use their APIs for coding and reverse coding. I'll stop recording now. <laughs>